In the midst of UFC 295 at the iconic Madison Square Garden, lightweight contender Jared Gordon realized a dream, achieving victory in the very same building where he had faced some of his most formidable challenges. Proving to be a fighter beyond the octagon, the New York City native shares his inspirational journey from the streets to the garden in Fighter Focus. New York City, a city without a cop in the world. We are in the Big Apple for what has become an annual November showcase. This is the place to see MMA. This is the most iconic arena in all of combat sports history, and tonight is a special night. I have deep roots in New York City. The city can make you or break you. For me, it did both. I would walk by the garden and look up at it and think to myself, one day I would fight there and win just like my grandfather did. Jared Gordon, a total inspiration and what he's dealt with en route to this UFC appearance tonight is nothing short of extraordinary. By having the opportunity to fight here in New York City means something to Jared Gordon. I was going to have my Madison Square Garden moment. Oh, oh he heard him. Madison is down. That'll do it. He got it. New York, New York, you made me. My grandfather fought in the stadium four times. I used to shoot heroin in Penn Station underneath this building. Now I'm fighting in it and knocking guys out. You can do anything you want. My whole family, we're New Yorkers through and through. Fighting and drugs run in my family, and we have a deep history with both. My grandfather is Salvatore Ferrello. He grew up here in Harlem. He was a pro boxer. He fought mostly in and around New York City. He had some pretty big fights. Aggressive, spidery looking, near the end of the first round now. And he almost floored him then. The challenger has been forcing all the way. Not only was my grandfather a pro boxer, but he was also a bit of a gangster. My grandfather was involved with organized crime, and he was dealing heroin at the time. He died young. He died drinking, smoking all the way to the grave. He didn't have the tools to get the help that he needed to have a fruitful life. I was born in Manhattan, and I spent the first half of my life in Roslyn Heights. Roslyn Heights is a very affluent neighborhood on the north shore of Long Island. My father did very well. He was a blue-collared guy. He owned a wholesale hardware company. He started as a mom and pop, and they grew it into a corporation. I lived in a big, lofty house with a pool, and we had three cars. I had everything that a kid could ask for. My parents gave us everything that we wanted. Eight years old, I went to a sleepaway camp in Pennsylvania. I was sexually assaulted there by a male counselor. I can remember the, the pain, the sounds, the smells, the tastes, and those are like, Those feelings will never go away and will forever be etched in my memory. It was a really, really dark time for me. I remember coming home from camp that summer. I would get like a flashback of what had happened to me. I always remember thinking like, I don't want to think about this. Like, I don't want to feel this, so drugs, came an easy way for me to, to numb the pain. When I started doing different drugs, I was nine years old, I was really young. First was weed and alcohol. Everything I did was to bury my feelings. I just wanted it to go away. We ended up moving to Astoria, Queens. I'm in an urban area, complete culture shock. I had to start over in a new high school. I was f***ed off. Most of the kids that I was friends with and that I was hanging out with were all, you know, kind of like knuckleheads. And my buddy was like, yo, let's go box. Let's go to the boxing gym. The Ultimate Fighter had just premiered Stefan Bonner, on, Forrest Griffin. This got to be the craziest war thing I've ever seen. And I just fell in love with the sport, man. What? 
I started training MMA and I hurt my neck. I wanted the pain to go away. I took some Vicodin and that quickly led me to like full-blown opiate addiction. I was 22 when I went to my first treatment center. I met two guys in there. They showed me how to use needles and I had my first bundle of heroin. When I started using IV drugs, my life quickly deteriorated. There's no functionality in shooting drugs. Your life quickly gets out of control. Eventually, I came back home to Queens. There came a point in time where my parents weren't going to enable me anymore. It's either you get help or you get out of our house. And I would be like, all right, then I'll get out. And I would be on the street trying to figure it out. At first, it was like selling drugs. But then my addiction got so bad, I became my best customer. I would take the subway from Queens, and I would always get off at Penn Station. I would find areas to get high in. I would find a bathroom, and I would use the stall to get high in. I would go in there with my needles, and I would shoot up in there. There came a point in time where I was panhandling. I was obviously at my lowest. I would do anything to get money. Stealing from stores, robbing drug dealers. I did get arrested once for home invasion, robbery, felony battery. And I was facing 25 to life. Having MMA in my life was like an anchor for me. And it gave me a purpose. Like, I knew I wanted to be in UFC. I was using when I was an amateur. But when I made my pro debut, I was sober for about a month. Uh, I got it. I won my pro debut. I was training and fighting and winning fights. Jared unloading. Might be able to finish here. The only way that I was winning fights was if I was sober. I had a big fight in Atlantic City, and I broke my orbital. doctor stopped it due to the swelling. I had emergency surgery and spent the next five days in the hospital. They're giving me morphine for a week and I'm a recovering heroin addict. I came out and I relapsed. On Christmas Eve of 2015, I had my third and final overdose. I went to a motel and went on like the bender of my life. What I gather is that I crashed into a desk with a lamp, and I made a bunch of noise, and the neighbors had called the front desk or the cops, and the cops came up to the room. They brought me to the hospital right here. I fell asleep at the hospital for about 12 hours. I woke up the next day. I went to detox that night, and I've been sober ever since. That was my last run. I used so hard. I just came to the point where I was done. I couldn't do it anymore. I was defeated. MMA definitely was a reason for me to stay sober. I love competing. I love the sport of MMA. It gave me a reason to stay disciplined and to not use or relapse. I just want to be happy, man. With great honor to be able to bestow this black belt on him today. And Jared Gordon, if you could please come forward. I carry the suffering and the torture that I put myself through into my training and into my fights. A year into my sobriety, I fought Bill Algio on the Dana White looking for a fight show. Dana White was in the crowd scouting me. This is the one, Dana. The pressure was definitely on. This could be my big moment. Holy shit. I love the way he pressed the action. I was impressed with him. I did a great job. I won the fight. It's all good. What do you think? You want to do this? <laughs> I'm born for this. <laughs> you want to do this? I need to do this. Okay. I have to do this. Yeah? You're in your prime right now. You got yeah. a good record. That's I'll good. call you. Thank you, sir. We sure. got a deal, brother. All right. Thank you so all much. All right? Jared Flash Gordon making the walk for his UFC debut. He tweeted last week, 
18 months ago, I was shooting crack and heroin in a motel by Queensbridge Projects. Now I'm signed to the UFC, hashtag anything is possible. I've been through a lot of situations. I've been in places that are far worse than any other feeling that I've ever felt. You come to a point in a fight where you're like, should I throw the towel in? And I've never even contemplated that in my life. And I think I get that from all the suffering that I went through. Jared Gordon trying to finish this fight. And there is it. Jared Flash Gordon, a winner in his UFC debut. Being able to persevere and get through all that definitely correlates into fighting. You can be the hammer of the nail. You can be humiliated or you can be celebrated. Good shots to the body. Excellent work. There's no high like it. There's no drug like it. Jared Gordon spoke about how this fills the void. Oh, nice shot by Jared Gordon. Oh, he oh, heard him. Madsen is down. Yeah, that'll do it. He got the it. New York moment for Jared Flash Gordon. Wow. New York City is a huge part of who I am. Now that I've fought at Madison Square Garden and won a fashionable style, the next step is getting ranked in that and becoming champion. Order. Life is amazing now. Every day I wake up and I'm so happy to be alive. No matter how far down the hole you think you are or what you're struggling with, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. The main thing that you can do is find your higher power because at one point or another, you can't rely on anything else. You can do anything you want if you put your mind